Welcome to Fantasia, home of the Melodias. My name is Azalea, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the update to my Lyrical Lucinia deck. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. So starting off, we're playing three copies of Lyrical Lucinia Turquoise Warbler. Then we're also playing three copies of Lyrical Lucinia Sapphire Swallow, and three copies of my favorite Lyrical Lucinia, Cobalt Sparrow. So these three monsters you have to play at three because of the fact that you need to see them in your opening hand. And if you ever happen to just open up with one of them, either like it doesn't matter which one. Um, if you have access to Resize Starling, you can always search for your Sapphire Swallow, and Sapphire Swallow can get the other Lyrical Lucinias from your hand onto your side of the field. So that's why it's very nice. Um, they allow for a lot of swarming capabilities, and this deck is a very combo or into deck, although it can just fall back on, you know, standard Lyrical Lucinia, grind out the turns and poke your opponent every uh, every turn for like a little bit, but um, this deck does have the potential to uh, just pop off like crazy and establish either a really strong board with a couple of negations, or actually just uh, make an extra link and lock your opponent out of the extra deck uh, completely. So for some of the engines that we use to supplement our Lyrical Lucinias, we're running two copies of Didi Savant Kepler. Now Kepler, when he's normal summoned, you can search out um, a copy of Dark Contract with the Gate. And Dark Contract with the Gate allows you to go ahead and search out a copy of Didi Lamia. So Didi Lamia can go ahead and send the Dark Contract that you just used to search her out to the graveyard to special summon herself from your hand or your graveyard, which is kind of nice. Um, and then you can basically ke turn Kepler into a one card rank one play, or even a one card card like Link Summon, which is pretty nice. Um, and then, you know, Lamia can use her effect from the graveyard as well, so if you happen to have something like one for one or something in your hand, you can always pitch her to the graveyard to just get more value out of her, which is very, very nice. Now, speaking of one card like rank one plays and things, uh, we're also playing two copies of Kinkabio. Now, I cut Kinkabio down from three to two because of the fact that you don't really want to see him in your opening hand. Kepler is a much, much better normal summon than Kinkabio is because of the fact that it allows you to um, basically have no prior setup and then go for your plays. But Kinkabio is better uh, mid to late game because of the fact that, well, Kepler's going to run out of targets eventually, and Kinkabio can just start recycling things from your graveyard after you're set up. So you want to see this mid to late game, and of course, you can search all of these cards out with um, like things like Where Art Thou, so there's that. But we're going to get to that when we get to the spell cards. Okay, so next off, we're just going to go into some of the monsters that you're going to use for most of your rank 1 and link fodder. So starting off, we're playing three copies of Jester Confit. So Jester Confit, you can only control one of him at a time, but that's completely fine, mostly because of the fact that you're just immediately going to go ahead and make your link or rank 1 plays with him, and so you can special other copies out from your hand if you happen to open up with multiples. Um, another card that's really helpful for Swarm in the Field is going to be Turbo Booster. So we're playing three copies of this as well. Now, Turbo Booster um, just has a restriction where you have to normal summon um, during this turn in order to just special summon it out from your hand. So that's why we're playing things like, of course, your Kepler and your Kinkabio. Those are going to be your main normal summons for the deck. And it's just fairly easy to satisf satisfy those conditions. And you just, you know, once you've satisfied the one normal summon condition for the turn, you just keep special summoning them out from your hand and going for your Link plays. Now we're also running a couple of hand traps, so we're running uh, two copies of DD Crow, and we're running two copies of Effect Veiler. Now these uh, are both level 1 monsters, and that's really good for this deck because of the fact that you can interrupt your opponent's place by just keeping them in your hand, or if you need them for uh, anything, like if you ha need additional monsters on the field and whatnot, um, or you just want to make your Kinkabio live, you can just DD Crow something from your opponent's graveyard, noble summon the Kinkabio, bring it back, and all that good stuff. Um, DD Crow is searchable by your Lyrical Lucinias as well, so that's pretty good. And of course, both of these are searchable by Where Art Thou, so if you ever want to just end your turn with a hand trap in your hand, you can always search for that as well. Um, next off, we're playing one copy of Globe Bulb, and then we're also playing one copy of Dotscaper. Uh, I know a lot of you guys talk about like Evil Thorn or whatever, that's not a really good card for the Lyrical Lucinia deck. Um, Dotscaper and Globe Bulb are much more consistent because of the fact that they just recur themselves from the graveyard and they don't rely on having other cards in the deck that can be potential dead draws in order for them to be live. So these cards are definitely fantastic. And yeah, that basically does it for all of the monsters. So next off, we're going to go into the spell cards. Alright, so for these spell cards, starting off, we have a few searchers. So we have three copies 
of Where Art Thou? And we also have three copies of Dark Contract with the Gate. So uh, Where Art Thou basically allows you to search out your entire deck, whatever you need at the time. It's very useful for getting access to Kepler or King Cabillo, but it's also really good for adding like Lyrical Lucinas or Hand Traps from your deck to your hand if you need them to combo off or you need them for disruption. Uh, Dark Contract with the Gate is fantastic, of course, because you can get access to Kepler and your Lamia, and uh, Kepler being one of your most important normal summons for the deck, and Lamia because you can just keep recovering her back from the uh, from the deck or from the grave uh, with your uh, if you have multiple copies of like dark contract and things like that we're playing three of these because of the fact that if you do draw into it you can search out your Kepler and um, if you if you do happen to draw extra copies of these it really doesn't matter because you have Lamia in your graveyard they can just send this from the field to the grave or from your hand to the grave and then um, just special summon herself back so it basically always becomes an extra body on your side of the field Alright, so speaking of putting additional bodies onto your side of the field, we're going to be playing three copies of Instant Fusion. Now this Instant Fusion is basically just going to be used to tutor out your Independent Nightingale from your extra deck, you know, the card that's infamous right now for being part of yet another FTK. Um, but Instant Fusion is just really good because it puts her on the field, and she's a Wing Beast type monster, so you can go ahead and special summon things like your Sapphire Swallows and stuff from your hand, uh, which allows you to swarm the field and put more bodies on the field for you to work with, um, which is nice. Now, if you don't open up with the wombo combos and all that good stuff, uh, you also have three copies of Scapegoat to fall back on. And Scapegoat's really good in this deck because of the fact that you can just easily stall with your assembled Nightingale, just taking no damage and all that good stuff. Um, so Scapegoat just puts four bodies on your side of the field, so next turn you can go off and just work with all those things and potentially make a pretty strong field. Uh, we're also playing two copies of Pot of Desires. So Pot of Desires is just a fantastic draw card for us because of the fact that we're running two to three ofs of every important card in the deck. So um, the, likely, the likelihood of banishing everything that you need is very, very, very low. Um, and this just gets us more cards in hand so that we can work with them to go ahead and establish our fields. Now, the rest of the spells are just going to be one ofs that I tech in. One copy of Foolish Burial, one copy of Monster Reborn, one copy of Soul Charge, and one copy of, of course, one for one. So, Foolish Burial allows you to uh, tutor things out from your deck. Um, you can get Lamias, you can get your Glow Bulb, your Dotscaper, and all that good stuff. It just basically turns itself into a monster. Uh, monster Reborn as well turns itself into a monster by bringing something back from the grave. Uh, the reason why this card is amazing in this deck is because you do Link Climb sometimes, so you can easily just bring back a Link monster that you use to climb into a higher Link. Um, and that just really helps you with setting up your fields. And Soul Charge is just absolutely broken in this deck. If you open up with this card, you're basically going to win the duel. So that's why you play it. And then one for one, of course, just allows you to tutor out any monster that you want from the deck. Typically, it's going to be something like a Kepler or something like your uh, Lyrical Lucinia Cobalt Sparrow. So yeah, um, that does it for all of these spell cards. Next off, we're going to go into the extra deck. Okay, so for the extra deck, we play a lot of Link monsters in this build. So starting off, we're playing one copy of Link Karibo. Uh, Link Karibo, of course, you just need a level 1 monster and has a down arrow, so it's fairly easy for us to make, and it's actually really helpful for making things like extra links as well. Um, we're playing one copy of Link Spider for the same reason um, as we usually do on this channel, is because we're playing Scapegoat. So Scapegoat allows us to go for Link Spider, which is good because it also has a down arrow, can help facilitate things if, you, uh, if you've already used your Link Rebo, that is. Um, but thankfully for us, we actually got uh, Underclock Taker in the most recent set of Extreme Force. And Underclock Taker is uh, another down arrow monster that's very easily accessible in this deck. And the fact that Underclock Taker also has a left pointing arrow is very important because of the fact that you can uh, easily hook this up to like Trigate Wizards and things so you can help make his effects live. So even if um, you don't need it, even if you have like a Link Spider up here, you can make your Underclock Taker over here and he has a Link arrow that can help co link to. Uh, to your um, Trigate Wizard and all that good stuff. So Underclock Taker is also really good because it just facilitates the strategies of Lyrical Lucinias, which is like just deal mass amounts of damage to the opponent. And because of uh, Assembled Nightingale's effect where it can just, it can gain quite a bit of attack actually, you can use Underclock Taker and just lower the attack of some of your opponent's monsters, and you can just ram into them and clear out the board with your Assembled Nightingale, which is actually pretty good. So it's like a utility card that we can use. Uh, next, we're playing one copy of Proxy Dragon and then one copy of Binary Sorceress. So the reason why we're playing these is because they're side arrows. And um, like I mentioned with Underclock Taker, we do play Trigate Wizard in this deck. And he's like the boss monster that we try to go for if you're going for your Link combos. 
Um, so these just help get like co-links um, with your Trigate wizard, and Proxy Dragon's really good because you can use like scapegoat tokens to make him. Uh, binary Sorcerer, uh, you can't use tokens, but it's just any two monsters that are not tokens, so fairly easy to make as well. Uh, we're playing one copy of Ib, the World Chalice Priestess. Um, Ib, same thing as Proxy and Binary, just side arrows and stuff. She also protects whatever she points to, so that's pretty nice. Uh, you can protect things like your Trigate wizard, which we have right here. Of course, Trigate Wizard is fantastic. You can negate, it's basically like a Cyber Dragon Infinity, but instead of negating and destroying, it negates and banishes. And once per turn, if it's just co-linked to like two cards, so if it has something above it and it has something like next to it, like your Ib or whatever, uh, you can go ahead and just banish one card on your opponent's side of the field. So it's really good spot removal as well. And the last card that we play, uh, of course, I'm not going to have this card because it is insane and it is really expensive. It's Saryuja. You need Saryuja in this deck because of the fact that it can easily correct your hand and just give you uh, the combo pieces that you need. It also allows you to special summon monsters out from your hand, which is very good because it allows you to continue swarming and continue getting your effects off. But yeah, that does it for all the Link monsters. Uh, next off, we're going to go into the XYZs. Okay, so for the XYZs, we're starting off with uh, two copies of Lyrical Lucinia Assembled Nightingale. Uh, Assembled Nightingale is, uh, of course, you know, boss monster of the Lyrical Lucinia archetype. Um, and she allows you to actually stall out some games, and she allows you to poke directly for some damage, which is pretty good. Um, some of the times, if you, like... If your field gets cleared and like completely broken, even after you establish a really powerful uh, link board, you can always just fall back on this to finish off the game, because your opponent's probably going to be pretty low on life points at that point anyway, so it's going to be fairly easy for us to do that. Um, and same with uh, Recite Starling, actually, Recital Starling. Um, Recital Starling, you can just crash into your opponent's monsters, and both of you guys take the damage. So Recital Starling is really good for just finishing off games if your opponent like just leaves a high attack or high defense monster on their side of the field. Um, and you're more likely not going to have more life points than your opponent, thanks to Assemble Nightingale protecting you from taking battle damage. Um, so Recital Starling is really good for that, and she can also help you search out your Lyrical Lucinia monsters to help you, you know, correct your hands and then swarm the field and all that good stuff. Uh, we're also playing one copy of Sylvan Princess Sprite. I guess I'll put her here. So this is the last XYZ. Um, she's really good for sh because she helps you dig for your spell cards. And almost all of your spell cards are basically just power plays. You know, Soul Charge, Monster Reborns, uh, Instant Fusions, Pod Desires, all that good stuff. So if you're just lacking some combo pieces, you can take a gamble. Just make, him, uh, make her and then see if you can uh, draw into what you need. If you get a monster, it's going to be milled to the graveyard. So hopefully you hit something like Glow Bulb or Lamia or your Dotscaper and things like that. Okay, so the last two cards that we play in this deck are going to be the fusions for your instant fusion targets. Um, so we're playing one copy of Thousand Eyes Restrict and one copy of Lyric Lucinia Independent Nightingale. So Independent Nightingale is of course the card that you want to play on your side of the field if you have Sapphire Swallow in your hand. But going second, you know, you might want to break your opponent's board. You can go ahead and make Thousand Eyes Restrict, take some of your opponent's monsters, make Link Karibo, um, and then put this into the graveyard. And then if you have King Kabeo, you can easily just bring this back and take another monster and then just you know, continue breaking your opponent's board from there. But yeah, that does it for the extra deck, and that does it for the deck profile. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, or found it helpful, please leave a like, subscribe for more Lyrical Lucenia content, and leave a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve. And until next time, take care.